Hello, Tabitha here with another Wednesday art snack to get you through the week. So uh, this month we've been talking about line, shape, and form. And I want to give you a few uh, things to think about and exercises to do to help make you a better artist. Um, and the first thing is to practice the shapes. Practice, practice, practice. Um, and as a matter of fact, here's a messy practice page I did. And remember, you're drawing from your shoulder, not from your wrist. You're using your whole arm, your shoulder, your elbow. Get comfortable with these shapes and it's good to draw them. You know, it'll translate into your painting. Draw the, the circles, the squares, the diamond shapes, the straight lines, the zigzaggy lines. And I'm using oil pastel here, which, um, there's something really great about drawing with a thick line and you can do it with chalk pastels or uh, charcoal, all sort of, they will all give you the same sort of thick line. Um, but of course, if you don't have any of those, definitely practice with pencil or pen or whatever you've got. But practice, 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 get comfortable with it. And then, start putting those shapes together to form other stuff. Oops, came out of focus there. Um, so you can see here, I did a few different practice uh, drawings here. This actually looks like a little milk jar, <laughs> old fashioned milk jar, but it's, uh, it's a blue agave bottle. And we've got a hand sanitizer bottle here. And you can see where I just took, I put this basic shape, this, I took this basic rectangle shape uh, and drew a rectangle and another rectangle on top of it and a long skinny rectangle, rectangle on top of that. Now I know it's not perfect, but it's just for demonstration purposes. So you can see how to put these things together. Now, if I were to try and freehand this, um, it probably wouldn't look quite as good. It prob probably would be wonky on one side. I don't know. Honestly, I'm a painter. Uh, I don't practice drawing as much as I should, um, but I'm better with a paintbrush than I am with a pencil or even oil pastel. So, so here we're talking about the flat shape of it. So I know we know this is a cylinder. We know it's not a square object, but just looking at it like this, if you can see that in the little screen, it really is uh, a rectangular shape. So that's what I drew. We're talking about the shape of things, not the form. You get the form when it comes out into three dimensions, but the shape is flat. All right, so I've got in front of me, let's try this paint bottle. So when I look at this, I see a rectangle, a triangle with the top cut off, but you can just paint a triangle in there. I'll show you. And another, it's actually pretty much a square. I'm not allowing for the messy lid that's coming off of the top there. There we go, that's a better, better view. So let's give this a shot. Rectangle, and I'm not worried about, you know, whether my dimensions are correct how close I am to the actual dimensions of the bottle. I just, um, as far as size goes, I just want to get the shape right. So I've got the rectangle in the triangle. Now here, we just want to make sure to get the right angle. Now looking at it, I can tell my angle is all off. So 
when you do this, when you draw, if you're drawing with a pencil, make sure you've got an eraser so that you can erase the lines you don't want. Now me, I've got an oil pastel here, so I'm gonna take some white and use it as an eraser and sort of smudge around it. And when I'm drawing with oil pastel, this ends up being a part of my composition at which this will later, this will become something else. So now I've got this really tall skinny house. See, kids know this. You just put together shapes to make other shapes. So when you're drawing with a pencil, you have an eraser close by, draw lightly so that you can just erase more easily and, um, and then darken the lines you wanna keep. All right, so I just took off the very top of that triangle and now I'm going to draw a square on top. And there's my lid. Now I could put in more details like the little part of the lid that opens up. And this is really a softer line. It's not a hard line. And ultimately, once I made a three dimensional rendering of this, that would come around. But that is a topic for November. So I can get in this line, and this line. And that's it. That's it for, for that particular object. Now, again, a three-dimensional drawing is a different thing. That's good enough for that. And if I were to try and just freehand this, chances are I would get one of these angles off and it would be a little wonky. Not to say that's necessarily bad. Sometimes it adds some character into your paintings when something is off like that. That might be the most interesting thing about the painting, but let's make it so that that's a part of your style, not because you didn't know how to render the paint bottle, for instance. Um, it's nice to know how to do these things to get better drawings. Now, I'm not one who likes photorealism. I really don't like things so precise. And, uh, you know, when, when I see things, you know, people will post things like, can you believe this is a drawing, not a photograph? I'm like, yeah, I can. And I'm, I'm kind of bored with it. You know, I admire the skill that goes into it, but I really am not a fan of, of the art. It's not, there's no soul to it. There's no soul. So don't worry about being off a little bit. It's totally okay. We're not looking for necessarily for precision. We just want you to have a better handle on, on how to draw and paint and, and, um, and render things the way you want them to look. So the more you practice this, the more you'll, the better you'll get. All right, so look around your house, see what you've got that will fall into different shapes. And it could be that it's not um, one exact shape or two exact shapes. Like this one, this Coffee Mate container, I sort of have to think about that because it's a big rectangle with a curve in the middle, right? So I could either draw a rectangle uh, and a horizontal rectangle up there if I wanted to, or let me try this. Rectangle. And I'm going to do another rectangle on top with a lid. And then make a line here where I want that curve to be. I'm just gonna come in and give it a little indentation on each side. Like 
and make that a smooth transition. And the lid, I can tell it's got a very soft curve. It's not a hard right angle, it's very soft. So once you've got that rectangle in there, you can soften it up. Same thing with the bottom of the container. All right, so now that I've got all that stuff in, if you were drawing this with a pencil, you'd go in and erase these lines that you don't want. I'm going to just sort of gray them out here. And I think my bottle is a little bit more shapely than the original, but that's okay. By the way, if you can't tell, I didn't practice any of this. This is just me grabbing what's close by to demonstrate. Because that's how I roll, that's my business. All right, so not a perfect rendering, but I'm okay with that. You get the idea. So what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, even things like, um, think about a pear, a pear shape. I mean, that's really not that hard to draw, right? But you could do it by taking a circle and a smaller circle and then smoothing that transition out in the middle. And erasing. So this is not too bad. Of course, this one's smaller, so it's a little harder to see. This way gives me a little bit more control over the whole deal. So I can make it uh, a little more wonky if I want it to be. I mean, this is a pair. It's a natural object. It's not a man-made object. So it will, you know, look all kinds of different ways. But if I draw the two circles first, I feel like I've got more control over the outcome. Now that said, a pear is actually a really good shape for you to practice on. Try drawing 10 pears in a row. 10 P-E-A-R-S. <laughs> if you wanna draw 10 pairs of pears, you can. It's really interesting to seeing, see how they change. 